Good evening, everyone. Hi, uh, my name is Vivek, and this is my friend Venkat. Uh, the two of us are going to deliver this talk. Uh, we have uh, kept the talk uh, agenda in two forms. So, we'll start with the deep dive about HDP cluster upgrades, and then uh, we'll also do troubleshooting. So, basically, that's primarily our agenda. We will run this talk through a case study uh, by identifying a use case for an administrator named Sam and uh, how he goes about upgrading his cluster, what are the best practices, what are the troubleshooting uh, steps that he uh, undertakes. So, that is primarily how this talk is designed. Uh, before we go uh, further, I would like to take a quick poll. Uh, how many people in the audience have upgraded their cluster? Once, okay, nice. Upgraded uh, multiple times, excellent. Uh, how many folks have upgraded a larger cluster like say 500 nodes or so, 300, 200, 50, okay. excellent. Okay. So, uh, this talk is about Sam and his uh, whole exercise of upgrading uh, his cluster. Uh, anyone by this name in the audience? So, that is a coincidence. So, Never mind. Uh, Sam manages uh, several clusters. He works for an organization called WBC and uh, he uses Ambari, of course, to manage his clusters. Uh, he is planning to upgrade his cluster. Uh, it is a 300 node production cluster. So, uh, and it runs services like Hive, Spark, Uzi, HBase, it is Kerberized. And uh, he is uh, interested in some of the new features that are available with recent. Uh, HTTP releases like Hive LLAP, uh, we have an Ambari view. So, he, he is uh, interested in those features as well. So, what is the first thing that Sam does? Uh, he visits Hortonworks website and understands that, uh, oh, it is uh, yesterday there was an announcement that Hortonworks released HTTP 2.6 and that uh, release uh, meets some of his requirements, one of which is running Hive applications. Uh, Hive jobs, Hive queries uh, much faster using LLAP and uh, he also wanted uh, the Uzi workflow manager Ambari view. So, that is also available in this release. So, uh, Sam is currently at HTTP 2.3 He and he then checks that is there an upgrade path supported from 2.3 to 2.6 and he finds out yes, it is supported. So, uh, he, he eventually decides that he is going to move his Ambari from 2.2.2.0 to the latest which is Ambari 2.5 and uh, HTTP from 2.3 to 2.6. Uh, so, now uh, that is where his whole upgrade uh, story starts. Uh, Sam will have to create a run book which will have entire complete well documented information about his upgrade process including the prerequisites, what goes in the planning, uh, what is the most suitable method rolling upgrade or express upgrade for his cluster, how to troubleshoot a failure or you know, any issues that come in, in an upgrade, uh, what is the uh, planned downtime uh, and uh, uh, who are the users, who are the guys who would be involved in this exercise. So, is it only Sam who can do it or can he engage other people, what are the respective roles that this, uh, that uh, should be given to Ambari users for this exercise. So, he finds out that just for registering the new uh, HTTP version, this has this can only be done by an admin role, the Ambari admin, while the upgrade can be carried out by uh, a cluster administrator or above. So, uh, that is all part of his uh, uh, upgrade planning act activity and we will go into more details in a bit. So, now Sam enters uh, research mode. So, he is found out a little bit about the upgrade plan. Uh, and then uh, he he is uh, sorry so he he is a very detail oriented guy so he uh, understands that the fact that its upgrade is also like an 80 20 uh, percent rule activity you, you invest 80 percent of time in the planning uh, and 20 percent in execution so if your planning is sound and thorough your upgrade will be uh, pretty smooth so sam is now in research mode so first thing is he finds out is how ambari upgrade works uh, so, uh, so first thing is uh, 
Ambari being the management software for the HTTP cluster, SAM determines that you have to upgrade Ambari first. And that also has some planning uh, required, which is primarily to back up the Ambari database. Uh, then there is some downtime uh, with Ambari server and Ambari agent. However, the HTTP cluster services need not be uh, brought down as part of this exercise. Uh, upgrading Ambari itself, so Sam finds that it, it's a bunch of yum commands, so yum upgrade, and then uh, Ambari server followed by agent, and then upgrade the Ambari <coughs> database schema. So that, that's primarily the Ambari upgrade workflow. There are some post upgrade tasks as well, like registering the appropriate JDBC drivers, and then of course starting all the Ambari server and agents. Now Sam is thinking this probably is a uh, lengthy and tedious on 300 node cluster. So, he also decides to come up with a uh, small uh, script for it. Uh, it could be shell or python that is something we will let Sam decide. Uh, post Ambari upgrade, so there are some non stack services like uh, Ambari matrix service AMS. Then we have, uh, the, so there, there is something like smart sense and then uh, in HTTP 2.5. So, uh, Sam also found that there is an Ambari infra service which provides the solar capabilities and then uh, the log search. So, those also have to be upgraded along the way. So, this is this all has to be done after the Ambari is upgraded. Uh, next step, so Sam finds out now once Ambari is upgraded, I should uh, start planning for the actual cluster upgrade. So, a couple of things on the prerequisites and planning, this is all making sure our environment is ready for upgrade, doing some pre-tests, uh, doing upgrade in a dev cluster and so on. I will go into detail in a minute. The third one, register and installation. So, this is where you register the target version. In this case, Sam would do the HTTP 2.6. So, he registers this version with Ambari. So, Ambari is aware that uh, now the cluster is probably going to be moved or upgraded to this new version. Uh, next step is installing the bits. So, this, this is handy because you, you can as an administrator, so Sam can actually do this ahead of time, no need to do it on the day of the upgrade. So, especially for larger clusters, this is pretty useful. And uh, Sam also finds out that uh, the, the versions can coexist. So, you could still have something like HDB 2.3 bits and HDB 2.6 bits coexist on the same hosts, while of course, only one would be, uh, the cluster would be running with only one version. Uh, and then the then Sam finds out that th that is when you actually do the upgrade and finalize. Okay, so back to the eighty twenty thing. Uh, so eighty percent of time spent on the upgrade planning, and uh, the reason we kept the title in uh, blue color is uh, whatever we we as presenters think are best practices for an overall upgrade exercise are listed in this whole presentation in blue. So, uh, for your cluster upgrade, so Sam finds out that I should take backup of all the configurations of the services. This is helpful in case there is some need to refer back, revert any of the old configs, backup the databases. In this case, uh, Sam would backup the Hive and Uzi databases and also uh, make sure that uh, if the database is managed by another person like who is a DBA, uh, that person is also brought. Uh, on board with this whole exercise. Uh, checking for third party software compatibility. So, if while post upgrade, if the new uh, libraries for HTTP, if there are any conflicts with the third party software, that should be verified uh, well beforehand. Tech preview services. So, uh, in some cases, like with HTTP 2.5, Sam finds that there, there was a case where if Atlas is installed on, a, on an older cluster, that had to be removed before an upgrade and reinstalled uh, post upgrade. So, uh, Sam does some work as part of the planning that does this cluster have any tech preview services and then take the necessary action. Make an API call which, which will run all the pre-checks uh, for an upgrade. So, this is an Ambari API call. Uh, it is handy and uh, Sam finds out that upgrade type which is non-rolling in this case, non-rolling is actually express upgrade. This will uh, return. Uh, an output uh, which will tell what all pre-checks have passed, whatever has failed. So, better to fix it upfront rather than on the day of actual upgrade. So, so as to minimize the downtime. Uh, 
disk space availability uh, very important. Uh, so, uh, on, on the user HTTP that is the directory where the whole uh, packages are uh, installed. So, ample space should be present, 5 gigs is what we recommend for one stack version. Uh, temp directory, so uh, SAM finds that temp directory in upgrade is also uh, being used for taking some backups, uh, especially the name node FS image. So, ample space is present in temp uh, and some of that uh, could be computed by looking at the current size of the name node directories. Uh, so Sam also you know, runs some of the uh, Linux, basic Linux commands to make sure there are no uh, dependency issues. So, yum check dependencies is one of those. It should return, uh, it should not return any errors. And then, especially on larger clusters, if there are hosts in maintenance mode, hosts which should be decommissioned, all that is taken care of. If there, are, there is a host which has a component in a failed install failed state, like component did not install successfully, that should be resolved, that the component installation should be either uh, made successful or it should be the, the component on that host should be deleted altogether. So, it is all part of the planning and now the deep dive. So, uh, Sam has now got some idea, he, he is slowly getting confident, uh, he understands what, what goes in the planning uh, part. So, now more deep dive on how, how the whole orchestration is. So, now, uh, Sam has figured out already that uh, with Ambari, the cluster can be upgraded in two modes, express upgrade and rolling upgrade. Uh, now, he decides to deep dive into both the methods. So, express upgrade uh, uh, is basically as the name suggests, it is express, it is like fast and uh, it uh, th there is downtime involved with this uh, method because it will stop all the services, like all services go down, the cluster is down. It will uh, update the service configurations for each service. It will switch the sim links from old uh, version, like in this case HTTP 2.3, it switches to HTTP 2.6. It starts all the services. And uh, there is also something uh, called batches, wherein on larger clusters, especially uh, and the uh, slave components like data nodes, node managers, they will be started in batches of 100. So, it is like a lot of parallel stuff goes on behind the scenes. Uh, all the orchestration uh, for uh, both express upgrade and rolling upgrade is defined in an XML, which is present on Ambari server. It is called an upgrade pack. Uh, the location is uh, mentioned. It is, uh, it is basically controlling the whole, uh, uh, whole set of steps uh, that, uh, that would be done when an cluster is upgraded. Uh, it is customizable. So, in case uh, uh, Sam finds out that in case a user wants to let us say run their own custom scripts during an upgrade, for example, backing up their own databases, you could add those scripts in this XML. You could also tweak some parameters like batch sizes I, I mentioned 100. So, you could also make it like depending on your environment, you could increase it or decrease it. So, uh, this is customizable. However, uh, Sam also understands that it is good to get in touch with Autonomous support team, since upgrade is uh, uh, is an important and uh, crucial activity for the overall health of the cluster. Configuration changes that get applied during upgrade are stored in another XML called the config pack. All right, so uh, we mentioned that uh, the cluster is in initially at HTTP 2.3. It has to move to HTTP 2.6, and uh, uh, with Ambari, so uh, there is uh, there is uh, good support uh, for coexistence of both the versions. So uh, and a lot of this is controlled through sim links, which uh, you know is is a very important invention in the history of operating systems. Uh, so uh, we have uh, two sim links. Essentially, what is happening is your cluster is healthy, running all the services are at HTTP 2.3. The the sim link for the binaries is actually user HTTP current, it points to HTTP 2.3 uh, directories and same thing with configurations, those also point to 2.3. So, as part of the upgrade, uh, the sim links for both the binaries as well as configurations get switched to the newer version. In this case, it will be 2.6. So, the, the, the table in this slide, two of them pre-upgrade as you can see for Hive Server 2, it is pointing to 2530 
and later the same link gets switched to uh, to 6. Same way for configs, uh, post upgrade it, it is switching to 2.6 and the same links are controlled by two commands HTTP select and conf select. Uh, it is good to understand these commands because sometimes while troubleshooting which Venkat will cover in a bit, uh, these commands uh, may be required to run. Okay. So, Sam is uh, getting into more internals and one of the other uh, mechanisms that he is, he is now trying to understand is rolling upgrades. Uh, so, rolling upgrades is as the name says rolling, so it is non-disruptive. Uh, it, it is expected uh, to have all your applications, YAN jobs, etcetera, they, they will be running while the upgrade is being done. It is, uh, it is going to upgrade one component on, a, on one host at a time, so as to make sure that, uh, that there is lit, uh, z little to zero downtime. Hive is an exception right now with HTTP 2.6, so Hive, Hive jobs or queries which are running. Uh, prior to upgrade, they, they may fail if you do not stop them, but otherwise it is supposed to be uh, non, non disruptive. Uh, again, so uh, similar to express upgrade, there is an upgrade pack for rolling upgrade that is uh, present on Ambari server, it is fully customizable and uh, similarly the config pack. All right, so, uh, I think uh, one of the questions is which method is appropriate for my environment. Uh, for my cluster, I have a small cluster 20 node or 50 node. Uh, should I go for express upgrade or rolling upgrade? So, these, these are this slide depicts some of the tests we ran in, in house in our test lab uh, for the time it takes to upgrade the cluster. As you can see the rightmost bars on both sides. On the express upgrade, uh, like it is a 1600 node cluster which uh, in a controlled environment, it's it's like a it's it's not running like a lot of bunch of apps, but it's a smaller it it's like a limited uh, used cluster. It got finished in two hours. Uh, the same cluster on rolling upgrade took about thirty hours. So the, the other thing is that happens during upgrade is service configurations. So th those get changed. And this uh, slide basically represents how that works. Uh, so, uh, continuing with the same example, let us say you have cluster HTTP 2.3, you want to move to 2.6. If there is a property X which is having a default value, you, you did not change it as, a, as an end user, let us say uh, it, it was not modified. In the new release, that uh, default value has been changed. So, d as part of upgrade and merge, the new default will be. Uh, persisted. So, it, it will become bar. Uh, if a property is deprecated, that will get deleted. If a property is newly added in the new stack version, in this case property Z, that will be uh, added. As a, so, assume property X, Y, Z are for HDFS. So, uh, that is how it works. If as an end user, uh, the property is modified uh, from its default value, that will be persisted. So, during upgrade, it will not be uh, even if the default has changed, it will not be uh, merged. So, it, it will the, the original and whatever was customized by end user that will be retained. And the below screenshot is something which is uh, the which represent the last column which is property X, uh, where Ambari is, is giving you an option to recommend, uh, it is giving a recommendation that this property atlas log 4j in this case has. Uh, has changed in the new release, but you have uh, modified already. So, just check if you want to keep the new version value or keep your yours, whatever you you have set. So, it, it will just tell you uh, and it is not like it will not block the upgrade, but just give you a message. Okay. So, Sam has now, uh, uh, he is now fairly comfortable with uh, the whole upgrade process, the deep dive in, and the technologies that go behind the scenes, he is now ready to upgrade his dev cluster. I will hand over to Venkat to take it forward. Yeah, thanks Vic. Um, hello everyone, uh, he gave a good introduction about me. I am Sam for all of you. <laughs> I am not a detail orient oriented guy, but unfortunately I am a paranoid guy. I would like to ensure that things go right. You know, why fix a thing when it is not even broken? But unfortunately, my application guys, they want LLAP. What more can I do? I need to go ahead and upgrade. 
So I would first try to go and uh, upgrade my development cluster. That is the best practice which has been told to me. So my dev cluster basically has 50 nodes, unlike my production, which is uh, 300. And um, I also would start writing a runbook. So at this point in time, I'll start documenting every step which I'm going to perform. The steps, should I write a script, or uh, how much time it takes, etc. I'm going to document. So um, I first go ahead and write down all the preconditions like I need to check spaces available, and then there is no new directory under slash user HTTP, et cetera, et cetera. And the first step I'm going to perform is to just go ahead and upgrade Ambari. So currently I'm on Ambari 2.2.2, and I'm going to upgrade to Ambari 2.5. So as I say, in dev, you know, everything goes OK. Nothing goes wrong. So I just go ahead and install, and Ambari upgrade successfully completes. And once it is done, I go ahead and verify uh, my cluster. Everything seems to be operational at this point in time. And um, the next step for me would be to complete the registration of the software. Registration of the software is, is a simple task. You go, uh, I basically go and select the version which I want. And information about the repo and the stack is being stored in the Ambari database. That's all is what is going to happen. The next step would be to actually install the software itself. Um, in the past, Maybe some people have preferred to install it during the upgrade downtime itself, but I believe during the upgrade downtime, we need to really focus on the upgrade rather than installing software or handling any issues which could come up during installing the software. So I go out and install the software. It took like about 30 minutes for me to install on 50 nodes approximately. It all depends on the speed of the system, how, how fast the repo can perform, supplying the files, etc. I also go out and complete the API, which uh, Vivek recommended. And then I think, OK, I have this 50 nodes, and I have uh, Hive, Uzi, and other operations. Maybe four hours is a good time for me to uh, go ahead and test for this upgrade. So eventually, the time comes, and uh, uh, the scheduled four hours, I go ahead and uh, start the upgrade. Things go pretty well in the beginning. And then suddenly, I see these um, yellow lines, yellow time signs out here. And then there is no more progress. It is just stuck here. So I'm just wondering what is the next step I could take, possibly. So I see a downgrade button, which I'm definitely not interested. There's a dev cluster. I want to somehow get it finished within the next four hours. Um, there is a pass upgrade option. Maybe I can do that. There is an ignore and uh, proceed. I tried it once, but it, it again came back to the same location. So the only option I'm left out with is pass upgrade and retry. So uh, at this point in time, I'm thinking, what could have gone wrong with HDFS? I am an expert in HDFS. I've been working for the last so many years. Let me go out and take a look at it. So I say pass upgrade, wherein the upgrade is stopped at this point in time. And then I go check on the node where I have the name nodes up and running. So obviously, the very first step um, any of us or even Sam, me, would do is to check if what state the HDFS is in. So I go out and run the appropriate HDFS commands. I find that HDFS is in a healthy state. So now I'm wondering, is there something wrong with Ambari? So I go and check the Ambari log files. Everything seems good out there. I don't find anything different there. Then I drill it down to the point that, OK, the only thing which can go wrong is the node itself and nothing else. So I go to the node. I check the Ambari agent log. And then I immediately figure out Ambari agent is down for whatever reasons. So all that I do is go ahead and start the Ambari um, agent. Come back here. I'll have a screen wherein I'll be able to continue my upgrade. I say continue upgrade, and then I go forward. So all that I get to understand is there's nothing different in troubleshooting upgrade. All that I do is the regular work which I might be doing even when there is no upgrade. So I'm getting a bit more positive. I'm, I'm a less, lesser paranoid. So I'll move on. So now I got the final screen. Um, the upgrade pretty much is complete. completed. It's at 99%. And beware that 1% is like really important. And uh, I have these three buttons now left out for me, downgrade, finalize later, and then finalize. So I'm tempted to click on finalize, but I'm not going to, because I need to get my application team tested. Otherwise, they're going to sit on my head next time. So um, I call out to the application team. I go out and ask them to do the testing of their software, and uh, also that of any third-party application, because the third-party application might be having some dependency on the Hadoop libraries which are already installed. 
So if it is so, it might have to be relinked or whatever needs to be done. Or maybe we need, uh, I need to reach out to the third party and find out whether this version of HTTP is uh, compatible or not. So luckily, I didn't have any problems with my application team. Looks like my third party software is working good with uh, the newer version. So I'm all good. So I could just go ahead and do the finalize. But there is a caution which I keep reading that if the cluster is not finalized, the data in the cluster is going to use a lot more space than what it would have normally. Because now I need to maintain the current state of uh, the data and also anything which may have to be downgraded. So there is a slight increase in the space usage and it can also become very risky and it could cause performance degrade if it is not finalized. So I'm happy that my application team completed within two days and I was able to finalize. So I clicked on the finalize and then I went to the Ambari UI to check the versions. Everything looked good. So I'm happy the upgrade of the Ambari cluster is done. My team is happy, the CEO is happy, but then the bigger task is ahead of me, upgrading the production itself. Now my feeling of being paranoid kicks in again. So I'm gonna do more research because I just saw one issue. First, whatever reasons Ambari upgrade happened without any issues. So I'm worried. Is everything okay here? Can I handle this or should I do more? So I go ahead and do some more research here. So I'm trying to find out what are all the different things which Ambari can help me in identifying how the upgrade is going on. So I figure out that there are auto retry of tasks. There is an option wherein I can say um, the operation needs to be retried every if, if it fails uh, after a few minutes. For example, I can set a parameter uh, time to be um, two minutes, so if something fails, I'll wait for two minutes and then go ahead and retry. And I also see that there are, when I was doing the um, dev upgrade, I also saw that there were options to skip um, slave failures or service check failures. So there does, there are some uh, useful features for me wherein in case if I know that some of the service checks are going to fail for whatever reasons, I can happily skip them and then fix them later. And in my production cluster, there are like about 300 nodes, and I see that by default, uh, the, uh, the package installation would happen 100 nodes at a time. Um, I have a local repo. I'm not sure my, whether my local repo can support 100 uh, requests at the game same same point in time. So I would ideally like to reduce this to say about 50, and do some uh, basic testing with that whenever it is possible. Not in the production cluster, of course, uh, but in another uh, uh, test environment. So there's a parameter called agent.package.parallel commands limit. Uh, default value is 100. It can be either reduced or increased. And also I find that in an express upgrade, by default, uh, the actions are taken on 100 nodes together. For example, if a data node needs to be restarted post upgrade, um, I find that it's going to do it at 100 nodes in a batch. But I'm not very comfortable with doing 100 nodes in a batch. I would like to reduce it to 50. Then I figure out that the upgrade pack XML has got a parameter which can be modified. The default value is 100 for that. It can be changed to 50. Um, this upgrade pack XML is the one which Vivek discussed some time back. So now I go ahead and search. I, I log on to HCC and you know I, I go to Stack Overflow and search for any issues which typically comes up while doing an Ambari upgrade. And then while doing so, I figure out that quite a few times there have been constraint violations. Index is already existing and uh, uh, we are trying to recreate, not recreate, we are actually trying to create instead of recreate. Um, so uh, when I went through these problems, typically this is how it is debugged. Go through the Ambari server log files, identify the table or the index or the constraint which is causing the issue, and then find out what that index is doing. Then maybe I need to talk to support quickly and see whether it's safe to fix it and then retry. So every time when I find an issue and if I want to retry uh, the Ambari upgrade, I'm told that I need to first restore the backup of the database which was taken before the upgrade. Because um, if the upgrade is 50% done, there, there are going to be inconsistencies if I'm going to redo the upgrade. So ideally I should be restoring the Ambari database and then fix a violation if it is possible and then restart the Ambari upgrade. So it's, it's possibly a good idea to talk to tech support around this time. If it is a test environment, maybe you could go ahead and try and do it. But otherwise, if it is production, it's it's a good idea to talk to tech support because there are times when it is also an, it is also a product issue wherein 
something else might have to be taken care of and i was wondering why there should be an ambari uh, why there should be a database inconsistency at all for in the first place okay and why didn't ambari tell me for so many days and when i'm doing the ambari upgrade suddenly it's all throwing up so this question was eating my mind and when i search this is what i find so db consistency check is something which is enabled from ambari 2.4 and prior to that it was not there which means there could be inconsistencies in the database which is not explicitly shown to us but then i also figured out that if we go through the ambari server log file there are database consistency checks which is being performed and it also throws an error in case if there is a violation it is just that probably i never noticed them before so in the previous version why why this could have happened this could have possibly happened because there was a failed installation which was not properly taken care of maybe um i went ahead and dropped something using an api i didn't take a proper look at it and then it stayed around and it caused an issue or it could be a product issue as well sometime so now i figured out that there are, there could be problems with the ambari database so now i'm wondering what will happen when the http upgrade actually happens is there something which i can look at the database which will help me in troubleshooting so when i digged around this is what this is a nice flow chart which i figured out from somewhere so currently i'm on ambari 2.3.6 my first job is to register uh, http 2603 that's the latest version so there are several tables in the ambari database which could get updated or uh, updated during the upgrade but i'm uh, i saw that these are the basic tables which are really useful in troubleshooting for example when i'm registering http it's going to update repo version and stack so in case if uh, for some reason i'm using a local repo and then when i do the installation my local repo is gone so it's using uh, the regular public repo in which case i can go and check the stack table and see which is a um, which are the repos which i am going to use similarly i can check repo version to see whether um, the versions have been correctly installed or not the next step which i would normally do is install on nodes using yum so the tables which typically gets updated are cluster version and host version for example i had 50 nodes in my dev cluster so host version will have an entry 50 entry for the new software which i have registered so i can easily find out whether it's in an install stage or install failed or completed i would be able to check from there then I, the next step would be to perform upgrade so uh, the tables which i figured out for perform upgrade are cluster version host version upgrade upgrade group and upgrade item all of this table seems to be very important during the upgrade and it also has very useful information so as part of the upgrade the libraries are upgraded in the sense um, somebody installed the software and then i'm going to use http select to switch the software and restart the service with the new library that's all i'm going to do there's no rocket science here so when this is being done host component state is also updated uh, host component state has the service which is a component what is the current version what is the current state so this will help me in finding out if everything is going okay with that for example if one of the component failed i could go and check in that node first of all whether which version of the software is being used i can try to manually restart and see which version is coming up i can come to host component state and see if everything is matching before making some decision so i'm i'm becoming more and more confident now that where i can uh, you know there are a lot of places where i can get some information which will help me in troubleshooting these issues and then eventually i'm going to finalize when i finalize the tables which might be updated are cluster version host version upgrade upgrade group and item so there's a lot of tables available for me so i'm really happy i'm a database person and I, you know I, i love to go and see but caution my development team suggests that don't update any tables without discussing with us so i further research now uh, 15 node um, eventually took about 3 hours for me to complete for example in my given scenario so i'm going to go in for a 300 node uh, Uh, upgrade next so i would like to know if there are performance issues and things like that so when i search these are couple of issues which i came across there could be a few more one is um, same namespace really takes too long whenever the name node heap size is very huge especially say for example my name node heap size is like 100 gb plus then it could take a lot of time and same namespace is one of the action given to me in the upgrade guide that i should be completing first so it might be a good idea for me to just go ahead and test it first same name space and if it's going to take a take too long then maybe i need to increase the agent task timeout so that during the upgrade when the same name space is happening it doesn't timeout and another 
problem is the host role command table itself. Now, this is a table which has a history of all the commands which have been which have been ever executed in this cluster. So, there is no easy way to clean it up, there is no direct way to clean it up, but there is a way to clean it up. So, maybe I need to look at it and then clear up. If it is not cleared up, when the upgrade is happening, it keeps querying for the in progress um, commands and that could delay the overall uh, upgrade time itself. Now, this is something which we cannot be, uh, it can be done during the upgrade, but you know there is a good chance I might go ahead and delete a task which is important for the upgrade. So, it is probably not a good idea to do it when the upgrade is happening. It is better I take care of this before itself. So, I am also interested in seeing in case if there is a failure, is there a quick way for me to get back to support with what is my current state of the upgrade. So, um, when I search HCC, I found these APIs which can be used to summarize uh, the current status of the upgrade up to the upgrade item level or up to the task level. So, what should I do? I need to first invoke an Ambari API which will show me all the upgrades which has been ever attempted and then I should choose the latest upgrade and once I get the latest upgrade, for example, here it is 441. Once I get the latest upgrade, I can um, invoke uh, one of these commands to get the complete detail about a complete JSON of the current status. Now, why is this useful? So, for example, in the JSON, I figure out that one of the paragraphs has failed in holding failed status. Now, this is a item level um, JSON. There can also be a task level JSON which can further define it, but in this example, I have taken um, the item level thing. So, there is a holding failed. So, and then I am not able to continue my upgrade anymore. So, maybe I somehow need to change uh, the value from holding failed to something else. Holding failed mean basically means that the task failed and then I am not able to progress. I am just waiting for a retry or a skip to happen. So, if I have a GUI where I have a retry button, I can just go ahead and try a retry button. If it fails again, then maybe I need to debug it or I could use a API to reset this value. Now, the upgrade can be in several status, but uh, I figured out that for troubleshooting, uh, we need to worry about holding failed, holding timed out, which means a task is running and it just got timed out, the task got timed out, in which case I may have to increase the amount of the agent task time timeout in the Ambari properties. Or it could be skip failed, because I saw that some of the service failures can be skipped. So, I enable skip in the beginning. So, whenever I skip some services and it is not executed, that is marked as a skip failed. Now, I am also interested in figuring out, we spoke about HTTP select and com select, are there issues which could cause, um, can there be issues because of that. So, when I searched, I got one particular issue wherein uh, post upgrade, when a service was started, it failed with a looped symbolic links found while resolving issue. Now, basically the com select and HTTP select create several symbolic links, basically especially the com select create symbolic links which can actually, which will point to the eventually correct uh, configuration files. So, fixing that also was easy because com select needs to be run to create the config directory and then we need to set it and eventually it is soft linked as well. Now, for some reason in the previous re, uh, version, the con folder was not correctly uh, created that showed up when I was doing the upgrade now. And I also came up came across another issue. Now, uh, I am doing only an express upgrade, but I saw that in rolling upgrade, Hive applications are not starting um, by the time it gets over. So, this is because uh, when we restart Hive server, it started with a new port number. So, obviously, the application either the server needs to be restarted or the client configuration needs to be changed. And from 2.6, Hive is not even supported for rolling upgrade. Okay. So, um, I have gone through several problems, several uh, troubleshooting things. I am very, very confident. So, I can now go ahead and write my run book completely and complete my production upgrade. Thank you. Yeah. Leave it here. So, this is the run book, it's basically a summary of the whole talk. Okay. Um, any questions? Yes. Upgrade process from the documentation and HCC. <laughs> Any other question? Somebody had a question there. Yeah. Uh, 
Do you want to answer that? Can you say that again, please? Correct. That is correct. Correct. In case if somebody tries, they will get a message like this. Yes? So, uh, as far as I know, after the upgrade, if you want to do the build up, you have to manually remove the packages. You correct. You need to register the stack, so other than plus for upgrading this, we can avoid it. Right. So, from 2.5, we have an option to delete the older packages. In the previous version, we do not have. It needs to be manually cleaned up. So, there is an API call, uh, the second bullet. That is the one. VM remove is kind of tricky because we have found that in some clusters it also removed the current version current packages. Versions. So, oh, you have to be very careful. So, is it just doing deleting? Yeah, but this will just take care of the dependencies. So, with this API call it will remove everything before this version. So, you give a version it will remove all the packages older than the version you specify in the call. Yeah. Thank you. Okay.